Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on my experience as a play worker. So let's get into it. Now I want to keep the videos in this series quite short because I just want them to have all of the information that you might need to look into other job prospects that you might be interested in prior to getting an assistant psychologist role or just other jobs which could really help support your journey towards the clinical doctorate. So what is a play worker? Basically a play worker is someone who supports children and young people to have a space to play and just create opportunities for them to, to play. I worked for a charity organisation who focused on the children who were turned away from mainstream services. So these children mainly had moderate to severe learning disabilities and so a lot of the mainstream services and even the ones that were made for children with learning disabilities would turn these children away. And so that was where our group came in. The group that I worked for was every Friday evening for four hours and then there were also some weekend groups and then also throughout the summer holidays there would be other groups set up. So my role within this organisation was to help organise and create opportunities for play. So whether that be organising an activity like arts and crafts or musical statues or anything like that it was basically my job to set that up for the kids and so we would have two rooms one would be a arts and craft reading kind of room more chill we also had a sensory area and then we also had a um, a big like sports hall area which would be for more rough and tumble play and there was also an outdoor bit which we would use in the summer definitely not in the winter <laughs> and so we had access to so many different toys and activities my job was to select different toys and select different activities for the children to do each week and so in each room I would choose okay so last week we did this so maybe I'll do something different this week I would try to create games from the equipment that we had it was a really fun job I absolutely loved it yeah that was my main role was to literally organize the activities and also facilitate play a lot of these children had communication difficulties and so maybe it was me trying to be the middleman between two children so i'm like helping them navigate how they're going to play with each other or explain okay like this person's using it at the moment like we have to share so maybe come back in a little bit so really just being there as a moderator and trying to encourage children to play if there's a a particularly shy child that's just sat in the corner then maybe I would go and approach them and see if they wanted to play with me maybe and then help integrate them into the group. Another part of my role was obviously to keep the children safe so if the child was climbing on something too high then I would try and beckon them like down to the ground. Within the group that I was working for a lot of the health and safety things were placed on the parents. The parents were always in the building just watching the children so we did have a climber. Um, he loved climbing up really like he would climb on the walls, somehow find a ledge and just be climbing. If it was something like they're using scissors or they're running around with scissors, then yes, that would come under my job. Like I need to be aware of where the equipment is and what people are using it for. So managing risk and health and safety is part of the job description. I think it always is when you're working with kids. Because of the client group that I was working with, I did have to deal with behaviour that challenges or challenging behaviour and just help support that. There weren't that many occasions where I had to deal with it, but when I did we had a really supportive team, we were very well trained in how to manage it and also we did have the parents but what was quite difficult is when the child would maybe become quite aggressive towards their parents or maybe the behaviour that challenges was directed at the parents and, and that is quite hard to deal with because you're then stepping into to a dynamic that is typically at home and behind closed doors and maybe the parent isn't doing something that's particularly helpful or you don't really know how to step in so that is quite hard to deal with and that, that's difficult having the parents there for sure but it, it was again another great experience of learning about how behaviour that challenges can impact other people around them so a lot of other children would become distressed when they saw a um, behaviour taking place and so it's also understanding how to manage that and their feelings and it's also about learning how to manage the after effects of when a behaviour has happened especially when you work in a group setting. I've done this in every video that I've made about my work experience I just want to be open and honest and have full disclosure about everything so I got paid £10 an hour in this role. It depends on where you're working, what client group you're working for and the amount of funds that the organisation has available. Now this is the bit that I think is very important for all of these videos that I'm making and it's 
the unique skill set that I got from working as a play worker and especially in the context of moving on to an assistant psychologist job or moving on to the clinical doctorate. The first unique skill I got from this role was the fact that I was doing group work which is quite hard to get into I've realised. I haven't done any yet in my assistant psychologist job because of COVID which is annoying. I was able to do group work in the sense that I was managing a group. We did have group activities not all the time and not if the children didn't want to but if they did then we would create a group activity so yes I was managing a group which was great experience. It also taught me how to be a good leader so because I was managing all of the activities, setting them up, creating a plan, working with the team to decide what activities might be better for one week or trying to research new activities I felt like my leadership skills really did grow but also I had the role of training other people when they joined the team so again I think that is quite a unique role and it is something where you have a lot of responsibility which I appreciated and it taught me a lot it taught me a lot about standing up for myself it also taught me about how to explore my ideas and ex um, share my ideas with others and also how to be a good leader and and the fact that to be a good leader you need to be a good example this is again a skill that I learned in a previous job but I really grew upon this skill and it was managing challenging behavior this skill isn't essential to being a clinical psychologist I think it's important that as a psychologist you are aware of the really hard bits as well as the really good bits and just to get a feel of it really. Finally I really improved upon my communication skills in this role because I was dealing with children, I was dealing with children with moderate to severe learning disabilities and I was also dealing with parents and the siblings of these children. So that meant a variety of different things. I obviously had to change the way I communicated at times either using gestures, a bit of makaton, or maybe even using pictures or drawings or modelling behaviour as a form of communicating. There's that and that was mainly with the children themselves. Now I also had to liaise with the parents. I think that was a really good skill that I learned as well. So if this job tickles your fancy, but where can you find it? I found this job actually on a Facebook page. I was linked into a Down syndrome community Facebook page in Brighton because of an individual that I supported at the time. That was a really brief interview stage but because I had good references, I had a DBS already, it was all fine and I think the main thing was is that they wanted to know what my personality was like and whether I'd be able to blend into their team quite well and being a play worker you need to be quite bubbly and energetic and positive and I just am naturally like that most days. I'm not going to include interview tips in this video, I don't think that would be fair because really I only had one interview for a play worker job and also the interview wasn't that formal to be honest. Have a look at the Facebook groups in your area for people with learning disabilities or just any care work really. They're a really good place to be and I think you can get some valuable experience from the groups. If not, I'm sure if you look on Gumtree and Indeed or just Google search, some jobs will pop up. Normally they ask for a DBS check so just be aware of that. They might pay for it for you but if not then you might have to pay for it yourself. Overall, I absolutely loved this job so much. I looked forward to it every Friday while I was exhausted from running around after all of the kids. They honestly put a smile on my face. Anyway guys, that's all for this video. Please like it if you like it and subscribe for more content like this. I make videos every single week about the nine to five life. I do vlogs and also content around my journey to becoming a clinical psychologist. So until next time guys, I'll see you later.